Good afternoon, good people. This is Barbershop Therapy with Jimmy Evans. Today, Jamar is not going to be with us, but we're going to keep it moving. I have a few special guests, and we are here with Mr. Blaze Harris and Calvin Williams. Two individuals that have a wealth of knowledge that we're going to tap into today and try to figure out what barbershop therapy can help other people go through their issues and figure out what's going on with life. So, Blaze, tell us about yourself. Well, I am a licensed clinical mental health counselor associate. A lot of words to say I'm a therapist. Okay. okay. <laughs> also okay. Uh, a clinical addiction specialist as well. I was a firefighter for the city of Raleigh for 11 years and okay. educator for Rocky Mountain Fire Department for three. So, oh. yeah, so I transitioned into therapy after going through my own fair share of, of, you know, my divorce and trying to work through all of that kind of stuff. And I knew that, okay, firefighters ain't going to just talk to anybody. And I know brothers ain't going to talk to just anybody. Exactly. So I Absolutely. wanted to be a therapist for, for all of us. Okay, where'd you go to school? Uh, <laughs> so undergrad was at State, go pack. Uh, grad <laughs> school, grad school. Uh, I'm an Eagle, so I went I went to Central. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, HBCU. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Mr. Calvin. Well, my name is Calvin. Like my way everywhere. Uh, but I'm a father, husband, entrepreneur, all that good stuff. Mm. But I currently work at Griffith's Pharmaceutical Company. I love people. Run a podcast called Cut the Noise, Growing Through Conversation. Oh, yes. So you already know mm -hmm. we in here. Um, I'm passionate about man's issues. Mm -hmm growing and developing and being the best versions of ourselves and one of the most important things i always tell brothers is get you some therapy mm -hmm. so i'm blessed to see you brother. all right oh yeah so let's let's talk about um why therapy is so important in our community and the lack of it uh there's so many different things so many different things that come up for us that we see in the community right. in, in in general like just look at the news i mean we were just hunting in buffalo Absolutely. Um, yep. You know, and then you got like the school shooting that happened in Texas and not to mention all the other shootings and stuff that's been going on. And then just being a black dude in America today. Yeah. What's it like? You so, know, so when you you hear all these things in the news, all the imagery of what black men are, mm -hmm. the, the negative profile and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, thinking it's OK to hunt us like in Georgia, mm -hmm. like in Houston, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and these different places. Yeah. How does that really affect the psyche of you know people of color right well i mean there's so many different ways with that man you, you think about it how many of us are worried when we walk out the door Absolutely. are we gonna come home because i know i am oh yo, so, I have yeah, you know what i mean so that i mean that's the truth like it's, and that's a, and that's a that's a reality for us and having that conversation with people who don't really understand it is like yo i have to be sure that i do everything that i can to get home to my kids every day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And then it's just like, but the messed up part about it is with our stigma in the community, we're not supposed to talk about that stuff. We're not supposed yeah. to talk about being afraid. We're supposed to be all strong and ain't nothing. Sp we supposed oh, to be hold on, I'm gonna, need you, I'm gonna need you to take all that out your chest. We got so much I'm camera bad. room. I'm bad. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, bad. Do, one more time. So, I mean, but, that, but that's the thing though, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be strong all the time. Absolutely. We're not supposed to be afraid, but the reality is, I don't know about y'all, but I am. Right, but aren't we all human, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. The, the the misnomer is that we don't have emotions as black men. That's mm -hmm. that's you know that's been challenged in in medicine. It's been challenged <laughs> in you know psychology. Yeah. You know we're supposed to be tougher than nails. Yeah. And that's what our dads taught us coming up. Take the pain. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. our their dads yeah. taught them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you you have to have a certain air about you right. that does not show weakness. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about therapy. Like, as a barber, you know, I sit and I talk to, you know, 100 people a week. Mm -hmm. Each one of these men that I'm coming in contact with have their own set of traumas that they don't even know about. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, uh, Calvin, are you a father? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about worries. Mm -hmm. You have boys and girls. I have a boy and a girl. Mm. Oh, so you I got, got double whammy. Same, same, same. <laughs> I'm man. with you. I'm with you. And yeah. I have three kids. I have two boys and a girl. Right. And so, as you were stating earlier, man, every time I wake up, that's the first thing on my mind, mm -hmm. how to keep my kids safe. Right. Mm -hmm. Other ethnic groups don't have that worry because other ethnic groups haven't been enslaved for 400 years. Mm -hmm. 
Jim Crow, mm -hmm. you know, to need Black Lives Matter. Right. And then once we do that, then they start saying, well, other ethnic group lives matter. Right. You know, <laughs> how, how, how is, how do we take back our power as black men and become more um, soft for our family, for one? Mm. You know, and have conversations. Because I think that's one of the biggest things that I see is also with fathers and sons. Right. Mm. We, we have a tendency to overparent our boys mm. and make our girls, mm -hmm. you know, strong. Mm. That's, mm. that's right. That's you right. Know, mm. um, what what do y'all think about that? Well, me personally, uh, disclaimer, uh, <laughs> they tell nobody how to raise their kids right, or right. what to do with their children, mm -hmm. but I feel that we as parents have to take the responsibility of realizing the errors of our generation before. Yep. That's right. Um, myself, I take in consideration when I tell my son or my daughter anything, if they... I ain't gonna say give pushback because that's mm. a different thing. Right. <laughs> but if they don't understand why they can't do a thing give or why the they shouldn't do a thing, I bring forth an explanation. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Because yeah. our parents, I know Never mine did. didn't right. get no explanation. No. So because so I, I said something. There you go. That's that, it. That's, <laughs> right. that's, that's it. it. And so with that thought, is I'm 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 looking to bring us back to, or not back to to bring us to communicating with our children mm -hmm. versus. I'm going to spank my child is my first yeah, thought. Right, and, right, I, right. and I've talked to a lot of my clients and they're like, yeah. man, you know, some kids need beating. Well, some kids need explanations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, when you when you think about school, mm -hmm. you know, if you have bad grades, I had horrible grades in school. Mm -hmm. They were terrible. And I remember coming off my basketball team and we all having a group meeting mm -hmm. about our grades. Mm -hmm. We had corporal punishment. Our coach, for every F, you got two, two whacks of this. Yeah. Paddle that's right. yeah. you know degrading. Yeah, I didn't need right. a beating, I needed a tutor, right? Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. know no what I'm doubt. saying? No but doubt. that's what was, and then you know, you get punished at home mm -hmm. after that same scenario at school. <laughs> so, you know, Blaze, as, as a therapist, is that a trauma response that we, we're operating out of? So, it can be, yes. And, and the thing about that, it, you hit on a lot of points. You know, the first thing is like, okay, you get an F, the coach gets you. All right, but then you said when you get home, they get you. Yeah. You just skipped all the way, all the people who know you from mm -hmm. home who could get you before mm -hmm. you got home. That neighborhood. So that's the thing. So mm. back then, everybody had permission to, yeah. everybody had a permission to tag you. That oh, was yeah. kind of like, it was it was, oh, it was a community ass whooping. <laughs> that's, how, that's, how, that's how it went. Um, Absolutely. And the thing about it, I want to I wanna touch on what you said, is like, you said, I didn't need that punishment, I needed tutoring. How much of the stuff that our parents did, because they didn't know how to communicate. Absolutely. They don't know how to talk, because they were never taught that. Mm. And if you think about how, like, I was raised by my grandmother, and my grandmother was one of 17. Mm. So, okay. When they they weren't taught love, they weren't taught communication, they weren't taught how to use their feelings, they knew they had to go to work because that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff was really given. So that's what she did. That's that's what they knew. The product of your environment. Exactly. That's all that they knew. So, But the difference is the lessons that my grandmother taught me, I teach my kids the same thing. Right. Just not the way that she did it. Right. It's right. your delivery, right? Exactly. And so when we talk about uh, communicating with our kids, like you said, when your kids ask you a question, it's not necessarily it's pushback, but we we treat our kids as if they have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, you can't graduate from college after the first grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning. It's a learning <laughs> process. Right. right. It's a long, long road. But then when you tell your child, uh, "Hey, go clean up your room," mm -hmm. and if it's not clean. Did you teach them how to clean their room? Mm -hmm. So is that an unrealistic expectation that you have on your child to be able to clean their room to your specific specifications? Mm -hmm. And then if they don't, what's the first thing that's gonna happen? <laughs> mm. Oh, you uh, you didn't do it right, so now you're gonna get a spanking. Yep. Right, right, right. Yep. So I'm trying, I, I, I think 
you know, and I'm getting a lot of pushback from people right. because I was a, I, I was under that same thought with, right. my, with my kids. Hey, if you don't do it like I say, do it. You know, the next the next step is is this this is yeah. going to be your punishment. Right. right. But now with my older child, I did that mm -hmm. up until he was about probably 12 or 13. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I understood he's resenting me more every day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I had to realize that I was parenting out of anger mm -hmm. right, versus parenting out of information. So how do we transition from those practices that we were taught by our parents because they were taught by their parents mm -hmm. that were taught by their grandparents mm -hmm. two generations yeah, out yeah, of slavery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. you know, yeah. It, it was it was to beat a culture into submission. Right. And so we go back and we then we tell our, our, our kids, well, I do this because I love you. No, don't love me that way. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because mm. you don't you know, just not to cut you off, but we don't want our daughters to date a man that would discipline them Ooh. that way. There you go. Better speak on it. There you uh, go. <laughs> Cause I mean the first time my baby girl, she ain't but six right now. Mm -hmm. Anybody touch her? It's you already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a whole problem. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a process of first coming to a realization of that. That's why, like you said earlier, conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like conversations that we didn't have with our parents when we were younger are the same conversation that we have in man areas like the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we well, we feel comfortable enough to open up and speak on vulnerability. Right. Sometimes we got to throw a little comedy in there, yeah. just to ease it off, yeah, yeah. because Absolutely. that's how Absolutely. that's how we as men do. Yeah, for joke with jokes in uh, your in your comments, mm -hmm. there's a lot of truth. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and I can definitely appreciate that that defense. It it it, it softens the blow, mm -hmm. but somebody heard me. Yep. Yeah, and I, so I got it off of me. I yeah. got now. I can I can actually sit back and you know. A little bit more is going to seep out during that mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit here in the barbershop on a regular basis and find too many, too many common grounds. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you, I started looking. I was like, hey, we, we got to we got to reach more people. One, this one on one is great. Right. It's really comfortable. And, you know, we got this nice setting and everything. Yeah. But at the end of the day, more people need to have privilege to this information right. so and understand that you're not by yourself and you're not right. by yourself. Right. And. You know, you being yeah. a, a therapist, how does that affect that relationship from infancy mm -hmm. to manhood with men? Right. Well, I mean, it's, we've already said it. It's the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's the way it goes. It, the, the thing about it is you're going to have a whole lot of access to people that I want. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk to you because you're not a therapist. They can come in and say, oh, this is just a barbershop. I can just go and let stuff out. I can be who I am not realizing that they can come do the same thing in therapy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is the same thing. And there's so many, it's like just breaking that stigma of what therapy is. It's like, yo, ain't nobody going to know you in therapy unless you tell them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell them anything. I don't know the people that you hang out with. Right. Ain't nobody going, if they see you going into a building, they ain't going to think you crazy. And that's the thing. You go in and you see this stuff. Oh, they're going to think I'm crazy because I'm going to this building. Right. Oh, if I go to therapy, I'm crazy. It's like, no, you're not. So is it fair to say that we're standing in our own way? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes, we, 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 we are. And it's, but it's not just us, though. Now, I can't just say it's just us standing in our way. Sometimes the, the barriers with, with health insurance, health insurance is mm. ridiculous when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's just like. Let's let's be real. Everybody ain't gonna get it. No. And then the some of the stuff that they get, you're not gonna get a quality therapist with the insurance mm -hmm. that you get. And some people can't afford to go to certain places. So there are levels to mm -hmm. what the quality of of therapists that you get based on your insurance. So let's say like Medicare. If you go Medicare, makes you Medicare Medicaid makes you jump through a whole lot of hoops as far as going through therapy, trying to get a quality. Like the agency that I work for doesn't take Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I want to work with people who, and people want to see me and they have Medicaid, unless they can pay out of pocket, mm. I can't see them. And that sucks because I want to, right? you know, but then I don't want to, I don't want to go into people's pockets either because right. I understand what it's like. It's like, yo, I know you can't pay, you know, 50, 60, $70, $100 a session when it comes to this stuff. Wow. So, but what I can do is help you find somebody that does take Medicaid. Mm. So, but I can't help you if you don't come to me and right. ask me. So, wild thought. We did this prior to 
me starting the podcast, mm -hmm. I would have a group of fathers and sons come in and we would do basically group sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if people, it's a support group. Yeah. Look, for the lack of a yeah. better word. Yeah. You know, and understand that uh, I had a group of fathers that came in and all having the same problems with the same age group with their mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that that challenging stage. Mm -hmm. You know, when a when a teenager becomes a certain age, and whatever dad says is no longer valuable, mm -hmm. and it possibly could turn violent, mm -hmm. right? You know, because what happens when the child challenges the father? What where where are we parenting from again? Mm -hmm. right. Anger, 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 but not just anger, but emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we forget that you know, and kids don't realize. A parent, if you have an attitude, son, your attitude probably came from someone that looked like you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you know, not let a 15-year-old outsmart you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Me and my son, we, we, we got, I, he said one thing, but I was mad about something else. Yeah, right. Next thing you know, I got him choked up Ooh. against the wall. I don't want y'all to arrest me on that. Yeah. He's 18 now. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a trauma response. Yeah. That's a trauma response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, me coming up, my dad was not raised by his father. Mm -hmm. And so there were a period of time, we didn't talk for well over two years. We walk into a room and say something to me. And I say, yes, sir. And I walk out because... I was afraid he was going to kick my butt mm -hmm. because his favorite line to me at that age was, you ain't too old for me to beat your hind points. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, me I as that. his yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. I had way too much respect for that man. Mm -hmm. I still do at this time. I'm 51 years old, mm -hmm. but it took my mom to come in and say, man, your, your dad is sitting there with a tear in his eye. wondering why you don't talk to him. You haven't talked to him in two years. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, this is my excuse why I'm not talking to him. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all need to cut that out and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. we, did, we, we never could get past his trauma and was traumatizing me at the same time, mm -hmm. which I traumatized my oldest kid until it clicked. When I looked at him as me and him were going through that moment, I said, hey, man, I, I, I'm, I'm repeating everything that I'm done. And I had to, as a parent, go back and apologize right. to my son. Right. Ooh, as you know how big that is? You do you know how big that is? How many of us don't do that? Mm -hmm. Many parents that, that go back and tell their kids, well, I'm going to own up to, I'm, I'm accountable for my actions. Right. And this is the conversation that I like to, as you, how, how old are your kids now? My son's 13. My daughter is six, be seven next month. Mm. And these, you know, younger parents, we had older fathers. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a little bit older than you. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze, I'm a little bit older than you. But I, I want to give information that has helped me through therapy right. and the ability to, to, to find these little tools and nuggets of gold right. mm. and stop just, you know, divvying them out one at a yeah. time. You yeah. know, how, how, how can we do that from a therapeutic perspective on a high level <laughs> and reach a lot of people? Right. Well, I mean, the group concept that you have is an awesome idea. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think a lot of people neglect the fact that group therapy is therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come right. in because you, you're learning stuff, especially if you're with a professional, um, you're going to come out with stuff that you can use in your everyday life. The fact that you say things like, you know, I own up to my, to my mistake and I apologize to my son. Not a lot of us do that. Right. I know that I had to work on doing that myself. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm wrong, if I yell, if I raise my voice mm -hmm. and I will apologize for what I did. And, you know, knowing how your kids operate, knowing what your kids are into, right. knowing how your kids tick mm -hmm. and what's going to affect them in certain ways. A lot of times you just being there and being involved is going to be enough. One of the things that I learned is that, you know, we as, as black fathers, we get a bad rap. The yeah. stereotype is like we're not involved. Oh, yeah. We're not, we're not yeah. around. CDC said we're number one in um, taking care of our kids. Absolutely. So can I can I in, interject there? Mm -hmm. When you look at the at commercials, McDonald's, mm -hmm. Roses, not Roses, <laughs> Roses, uh, they got commercials. <laughs> they got commercials and <laughs> <in> Roses. <laughs> I tell you how old I am. <laughs> the, the Target commercials, right. and just the absence of black men in these commercials, like they're always hardworking moms mm -hmm. with n right. no dads, mm -hmm. you know, in in these these moments. 
or in these these media moments, mm -hmm. and it and it's and it's damaging. Mm -hmm. You know, because now all cultures are looking at us mm -hmm. from every direction, like you lazy people. Yep. Oh, even our own people are looking at us. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, when you think about all the things that divide us as a people, what goes from churches to fraternities to light skin, dark skin, yeah. good hair, tall. Duke, Carolina. Yeah, yeah right, right. I like, don't even just don't even throw state in there. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have never included in that conversation. Nah, not <laughs> but yeah, NC. No, whatever. That, man. Oh, what <laughs> but I, 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 I hear it on a regular basis. I, I, I refer to it on a regular basis. We're at times our own worst enemy on a, on a lot of things. Like we'll 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 poke the bear with each other. We, yeah. You know, economically, if you're not staying in this neighborhood, then you ain't you ain't you know you haven't reached that reached that echelon yeah. of, of uh, proper blackness. Mm. Or, ah, wow. Or, or titles. Yeah. Oh, titles are like we we chase titles, mm -hmm. but we treat each other. Mm -hmm like enemies mm -hmm. you know i love this i love my barber game i've been doing it for 25 years right mm -hmm. but it's so hard for me to present something to another barbershop without them thinking it's competition right mm -hmm. i don't want competition i want cooperation right right because that's the only way that we're going to move forward is if we cooperate mm -hmm. um <laughs> That's, that's real. That's it real is, subtle. It is right. <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to. I was going for subtle. Yeah. <laughs> that we we tend to have be in this thing with competition, mm -hmm. you know, and we've lost our, the, you know, the the Willie Lynch letters and things of that nature that have torn us apart as a culture. Yeah, is still prevalent to this yeah. day. Yeah, and I just want to. I, I I struggle daily trying to figure out what small thing I can do to help move this, like having gentlemen like you on the show, which again, I'm greatly appreciative of, mm -hmm. but anything else you can add to the, to, from your podcast, with, which, which y'all speak Let's, on. See, in my personal opinion, I feel the biggest issue for the collective is the lack of black media. Mm -hmm. And when I say black media, I mean, from a man's perspective, because we have media from the black female perspective. Mm -hmm. We have media from the, the white counterparts of the Hispanic community. But whenever our image is put out, it's That's never controlled by us. That's what See, when we control our own image, we tell our own story. Mm -hmm. And our story is what really matters. Mm -hmm. When we talk about life and relationship, it's the stories, the, the memories that we develop mm -hmm. that tell where we are, who we become. Mm -hmm. And by your show, my podcast, all of us together, we are beginning the process of creating a collective of black media. Mm, that's right. And by, by sharing our voices and telling our stories and sharing our pains and our growth and our development and even our stories with therapy, we are making the change. Yep. yep. We are being that that our parents weren't. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I pre and I appreciate that right there. Yeah. Um, something that else, th something that I see on a daily is is moms raising young men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to plant seeds with our single moms when they bring in their kids. Mm -hmm. You know, of, of chivalry. Mm -hmm. Like I, every young man I see walk through that door, hold that door, hold that door for your moms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But a problem that I see is a lot of moms are not willing to teach that to 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 grow that seed. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I ain't got time for that. Mm. He, he he too slow. Be patient with your child because you're not raising a child; you're raising a man. Mm. And if you got daughters, is this what you want him to always rely on a woman to take care of everything? Mm. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this statement without putting people business out there. Right? Okay, okay. But um, I kind of use family as examples a lot, but I'm gonna just say a family member. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have a family member that has the tendency to be on the flip side, the negative side, the stereotypical, not being there, not doing for it, not developing or right. giving that time. And with children, 
just like with men, we have to learn to teach also from the negative side. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we always say, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you do. You should follow, be like uncle who, whoever, or be like cousin whoever. Or you see him on ball, he played ball, he practiced and dribbled all over down the court. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to look at that family member that didn't do the right thing, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. individual on the corner asking for change, or the other individual that's not here anymore. That's mm -hmm. right. We have to give those examples mm -hmm. of what not to do mm -hmm. that's fact um mm -hmm. now with chivalry the, the problem with it the mom and i'm not this is nothing against single mom this is nothing against nothing at all nothing. we're okay. just stating if, if it come out wrong baby i didn't mean it like that some fact. <laughs> now the problem with it is only a man can teach a man to be a man i agree i agree now a woman what she can do is develop that individual, develop that child, and lead him and show him, you see that brother over there? That's a good individual. You see how, how coach, I want you to get over here with coach. I want you to play ball. Listen to him. He's going to show you. You know what I mean? Give those examples and put those, those brothers in the, in, the, in the gap. Right. That can plant those seeds more efficiently. So I, I like how you, how you put that because you're going to have to have a mentor for a kid that does not have that male figure in their life. Mm -hmm. And I will say moms cannot teach a man how to be a man, but they can raise good. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is really not, we're not attacking women. Mm -mm. I want women to know where we stand in the effort to assist. Right. You know, and, and that's a different, that's a different space because I think, you know, in interpersonal relationships, we we in too much competition. Absolutely. With who's going who's going to lead the household? Mm -hmm. Who's going to lead? Mm -hmm. You know, um, make the decisions. Mm -hmm. If we're together, we together. If you're uh, a couple, mm -hmm. then it should be cooperation. It should never be a, a competition. And I think that's one of the other things that's breaking down our households mm -hmm. is a, such a competition at all at all turns to be right mm -hmm. to be in charge mm -hmm. and it's it's scary to see the divorce rate right now you know and we're talking about you know at this on this particular segment mm -hmm. raising men mm -hmm. but it's 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 all interconnected right Every bit of it. and it's disturbing when i see so many young boys walk through this door and can't give me a um uh, eye contact mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. won't shake my hand mm -hmm. they won't speak when they walk through the door mm -hmm. because they, they've never been taught mm -hmm. they, they didn't have that example right see not to cut y'all bro no no go but another issue well it, it's, it's connected everything everything we talking about is being connected but also you got to realize that these children are having conversations they're not there's a lot of us that aren't having conversation. We can get on the phone, we can text. No, we can, we can, we can get on the game, we can, we can stream, we can talk for hours. My, my son, he played games and I'm like, you screaming and I hear keyboards slashing and yeah, touch. Yeah. But whenever it comes time for a conversation, it's a different vibe because people have been, and, and, and the pandemic kind of showed it more so, mm -hmm. yeah. but mm -hmm. We've been so separated, we've become accustomed to having that buffer in between. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, and I might go on a tangent, brothers, just stop. Me. <laughs> but most time when brothers are together, grown man of all age, we can all activate and move and in a level of respect. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's a low level threat of violence. We all know, everybody in this room know that if I say something a little crazy and brother stand up and puff his chest out like he did earlier, <laughs> there might be a problem, right? <laughs> and, and it's not fear, right. it's just awareness. Right. Because whenever we're, we all grew up at a time where we played ball outside, mm -hmm. but we was at the court for, for all day, all night, mm -hmm. until the lights come on anyway, yeah, absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah. We, we were all out there whenever trouble popped off and we just had to handle it because won't nobody else there. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you won't talk conflict resolution. Exactly. Ooh, that's so, this is the only conflict resolution. That's it. That's it. After the words, after the, the trash talk, it was physical. Yeah. But because of knowing that possibility of 
it could, it could go at any time, we learn a level of respect. Now, with these buffers in between individuals, like social media, you have trolls, right? Yeah. People that, that talk crazy online or talk about your mama and your kids and all types of stuff. And you like, you really don't know yeah. me. Yeah. And it's because there's that, that long barrier, yeah. that bar barrier or buffer where I'm, I'm safe. Yeah. I can, uh, 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 what bam, see. Yeah. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a dig into that just a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to direct this with you, yeah. um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Blaze. Yep. Gotcha. Got it. Mr. Blaze. Yep. Is social media and telephones and devices addictive? Oh, God, that's it. <laughs> Tag. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that didn't take long. I mean, like, <laughs> like yes. yes, they can be. Yes, um, and and that, and this, but and that's the thing is like we're we're it's attached to our hand for the most part, mm. and you know that's how we communicate. That's how a lot of things. So what does that do to our children? Mm. Well, I mean. They can talk on the phone, but in person, it makes it difficult. But like you mentioned the pandemic earlier, right? The pandemic messed a lot of folks up, mm -hmm. right? They made it so the interaction between person to person was pretty much nil. Mm. Yep. Everything, every school mm. online, mm -hmm. you know, gaming online, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's like the pandemic kind of gave us an excuse not to. Mm. And so coming out of that, I don't want to come out of my, my shell. I don't want to come out of my safety net. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm safe here. Right. I don't have to worry about anything here. Right. So, and that's the thing. And so, and, and as far as what it does to our children, yes, if we as parents don't teach them how to interact with other people and how to talk with other people or how to have conversations or how to interact and how to be social, then yes, it's going to, it's going to suck for them. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. so, but we have to, we have to teach them how to, we have to model the behavior we want them to Ooh, see. Yes, sir. And if we're not modeling the behavior we, we want them to do, then how can we expect them to do it? If we're not doing it, Absolutely. if we, how can we lead by example? Exactly. How can we, you know, say you need to be off your phone if this is what we're doing every time we're mm. talking to somebody. So cool. I'm glad you brought that up. So how, how many times parents do you know that mo that uh, monitor their children's uh, screen time? God knows I do. Mm -hmm. There's <laughs> lots of parents that don't know that mm -hmm. you can actually monitor them. Right. I'm one of them. I found out my, my son was 15 years old. I just happened to scroll across and I was like, hey, I can figure Wait out screen time. Man, hey, man, let me hold your phone right quick. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours a day yeah. mm -hmm. on this phone. Yeah. I was I was mad, but I was mad at myself because right. I allowed that, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, "Hey, where's the paycheck? Yeah. Mm. What do you mean, Dad? Where's the That's fifty hours a week, buddy. You need to be getting paid for this, <laughs> you know." Yeah. And so I I had to I had to stop not blame him mm -hmm. because I was allowing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went to Apple. Hey, how do you mm -hmm. set parameters? Mm -hmm. And parents need to do that part. You know, because then that again, especially going into adolescence and getting a little older, that testosterone without me and kicking in, yes, sir. we have to we have to teach them how to have some self discipline yes. themselves because I can't monitor everything. No, you mm -hmm. can't. You can't. And it's and it's and it's it is disappointing to see all these kids running around with an iPad, a tablet, a, and that's the new babysitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got access to YouTube. They got access to everything on the internet because and kids the are smart. Internet. They they're born into this. They're yeah. born into yeah. technology. Yeah. We came up. I had a uh, what was that? Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, it was a uh, VHS. The VHS. <laughs> I had, a, I had a video recorder oh, yeah. that I learned how to program. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the, that was yeah, the hardest I learned how to set the clock on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, boy, come in here and set this clock. I got it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but now, you know, they can actually, oh, like man. my son go on my phone and my daughter go on my phone. They'll make a whole movie yep. in eight minutes. Yes, sir. I can't compete with that because I'm illiterate right. as hell when it right. comes to, right. you know, what a computer or a, mm -hmm. a iPhone can, the actual capability of, but they're born into it. Yeah. It's a different time, man. It's a completely different time. So how do we, how do how how do we protect our kids in 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 those moments? <laughs> we adapt, man. Mm. 
That's what we got. That's a beautiful word. We adapt. And so, like, you know, we talked about how, you know, how we came up, how our folks before us came Mm -hmm. up and all that stuff, right? That's right. So they taught what they know. Mm -hmm. That's how they did. All right. Now, it's a good chance that the stuff that they taught us, okay, we memorize it, like, Mm -hmm. the lessons, the values and all that stuff. All right. But we learn to adapt Mm -hmm. and not beat the hell out of our kids. Right. You know, to get the benches across, right. to get the point across. And that's the thing. So we have to adapt. We have to talk to them in their language. We have to meet mm-hmm. them where they are. And that's the thing. A lot of parents, we don't meet our children where they are. Hell, we don't meet each other where we are. And right, that's right. the and that's the thing. So it's just like, how can I expect, like you said, you said you have difficulties with your computer and your laptop and your phone and knowing what iPhone does and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, right? How am I going to give you this lesson and expect you to give you this PowerPoint of how to use Google Docs or Google Slides or whatever on your phone if you are literate on your phone piece like that. That's right. I got to meet you where you are and show you the basics first. Mm-hmm. It's just like anything. If you like, if you're playing any kind of sport, you have to learn the basics before you go to the biggest thing. That's right. They say if you're boxing, you got to learn the footwork before you mm-hmm. learn to throw a punch. Yes, sir. That's right. So Fundamental. the fundamentals. If you get that basics and stuff down, everything else is going to fall into place. And if you forget the stuff that you learn. Go back to the basics because you'll never forget them. That's right. That's so right. that's what we got to do. You get right. that. You get that small foundation. Mm-hmm. You adapt and meet them where they are. You ain't gonna go wrong. Could you? Could you look in that camera? T- t- <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. So build that foundation. Meet your children where they are. And you will not go wrong. Mm. Teach them the basics. That's how you meet them. That's how you get them and teach them the things that you want them to know. All right, all right. Oh, well, gentlemen, I, I appreciate your time, and we're going to wrap this one up. <laughs> I would love to have y'all come back again, but yeah. before we go, I would love for you, my friend, Mr. Mm-hmm. Blaze, mm-hmm. to give your information of where you can be reached into that camera. Okay, yeah, you can follow me on, um, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on Instagram and TikTok as Blazo, B-L-A-I-Z-O 909, and I also have a podcast called the Dope Black Therapist Podcast, okay. and you can find it on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts. Mr. Calvin, can I get you to do the same thing for us? Here? All right. Facebook, it's Calvin Like My Way on Facebook. On everything else, it's Calvin Like My Way, Lord. Okay. Um, look for me, find me, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. No, holler me there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, we all over the place mm-hmm. out here looking to help brothers grow and be the best version of themselves. Awesome gentlemen. Thank you so much. So this has been another edition of Barbershop Therapy where we're cutting through the problems. I would like to, again, thank you. And I really appreciate the time that y'all have spent with me today. I mean, my last word would be, again, is communication, learning how to break the chains of our past uh, traumas that our parents gave us, their parents gave them and understanding that therapy is not bad, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. So if we can use this tool, we can make our community stronger and show that our black men can communicate with our families and our black women at a high level. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and y'all have a wonderful night.